Awesome. So I'm here with Talia and Maha, two consumer experts at Bessemer. Talia, because she's been doing it for a decade plus and has invested in multiple really interesting consumer companies, including um, Perplexity, which I think we can say, right? Um, which I, I would argue is one of the most interesting consumer AI companies in the world right now. And Maha, because she's the youngest of nine siblings, and that gave her like an unbelievable vantage to obsessively study consumers as, as she was growing up. Um, and she's been spending a ton of her time looking at the world of consumer AI. Um, and so I've got some questions because I'm I'm skeptical. I'm like a B2B investor. What are we talking about? Okay, I moonlight as a consumer investor myself as well. But, um, but you know, Maha, in our State of the Cloud report, we are saying that consumer thanks to AI, is now back from the dead in the cloud. We had this pretty fallow decade of consumer cloud companies, and we're saying the consumer's back. Like, prove it to me. Like, just because open AI, or like, what are we actually talking about? Well, I think, you know, we talk about this a bit in the state of the cloud, but generally consumer cloud unicorns have emerged uh, following significant advancements in uh, enabling technologies. And for the past 15 years, I would say, you know, since the advent of the iPhone and some of the social media platforms that were born since, uh, we haven't really seen uh, a lot of enabling technologies being born till about two years ago with the advent of ChatGPT. Um, and fast forward, you know, two years later, we have ChatGPT 4.0, you have 1.6 billion uh, site visits to the web app uh, for ChatGPT, which should indicate just how much excitement and consumer need there is um, right. in the LLM moment. So I get it, like ChatGPT can write poems for me. That was pretty cool. My grandmother was, was very impressed with that. But like, what uh, is happening with travel bookings? Like Talia, when is my life actually going to get better and will an app start doing things for me that I care about? So I totally dismiss the claim that AI is for B2B and it's not just as if not far more impactful for consumers in fact all of this current wave of llms the whole innovation is that we talk to the machine and it understands us in our own language in human language in natural language and so it is a fundamentally very consumer friendly um technology and that's why even as a business user all of a sudden you've had like a major consumer advancement yeah, of the way you consume everyone. technology right totally, totally. And, the, and the way that humans interact with machines is just completely changing and so as investors we look for these platform shifts these new modes of interaction and sometimes it's just an interface apple created an entire new revolution in mobile and in mobile applications and that's just a fundamentally new user interface AI is also kind of a fundamentally new user interface. You talk to the machine and it talks back to you, whether that's in text or voice or image or otherwise. Pretty amazing. Um, I forgot your first question, but I well, my question is like, okay, great. <laughs> so this is helping me write a haiku or like a college student, you know, cram an essay into the last 10 seconds when it's due. Um, <laughs> don't do that at home, children. But, um, but like what? Why hasn't it like massively changed the way consumers are interacting with other aspects of their life? Like again, I go back to travel bookings. If I spend another three hours of my life on like kayak, I'm gonna I'm gonna scream. Um, when is that gonna get better? Well, there's a lot of work that's going into these new agent architectures that are allowing you to actually take action and do things and say almost act as a personal assistant, which I think is the holy grail of a lot of different companies' visions and a lot of the um, startups that you're seeing, whether it's verticalized or horizontal, it's like, hey, here's a lot of information about me. Don't just make it easier for me to go do the thing, just go do it for me. <laughs> go book the flight for me, know my calendar, know my schedule. Um, we still have some work to do on the technology side, although it's very clearly like within the line of sight and you know, over the next months, if not, you know, quarters of actually getting to the point where we can have these more agentic architectures. So that's coming in some cases, it's already happening, um, but you'll see so that. a year from now, is like, a year uh, from now, is there an agent that's helping me do things like that? Or is that like, or a year from now, are you still gonna say, oh, that's coming next year? Like when is I that actually that, coming? I actually think it's gonna happen much faster than in a year. I mean, just this week, we saw the Apple announcement that they're, you know, in allowing now Siri can do a lot of these things for you. You can just talk to Siri and Siri can go into not just your Apple applications, but your third party applications. And you can just like talk to it in natural language. And 
it can do things for you. And I'm not sure if it can book travel for you yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if in five months it can do that too, Kent, and, and you're saving the several hours that you're apparently spending on kayak, which I don't know why you're doing that, but great. Well, I'm, I'm much older than you are, so it just, <laughs> just naturally takes me a long time to do basic things. But uh, okay, so Talia, in a year, is Siri booking my flight or, or is it an individual standalone company? I think that's like one other interesting area that we're debating is does, does Apple get to be the assistant or does OpenAI get to be the assistant and do all these consumer things? Or will there be standalone consumer companies that have like a singular function? Like where do we come out on that? My bet is a little bit of both. You kind of see it today. Right now you go to Google and you search for a flight and Google shows their flight results, right? And they kind of try and be the kayak and the booking and suck the air out of the room because they're Google and they love to do that. Um, and yet you still have kayak and you still have booking and you have these verticalized applications. So I don't think it's either or. I think it's going to be both. Kind of a mess. Um, okay, so Talia, you, you're bias alert, but you invest in Perplexity, which has been just a kind of crazy breakout success and I use it every day. Um, is that clearly just stealing share from legacy search or is that involving a new behavior? Like what's your opinion on what that's doing? And, you know, I don't know, how does that set it up for long-term defensibility versus Google or not? So I think there's probably a small subset of the queries that are going through perplexity that are taking share from Google because it's just a freaking delightful experience that if you haven't used it, use it because it's amazing. Um, yeah, but for some things, amazing. Google's still a lot better. Um, depends on the type of query. But for a lot of different use cases that I'm using perplexity for and I'm like a rabid DAU, um, it's a new type of query as well. And questions that I might not have asked before, which I think is happening. I think the whole market for queries and online information discovery is growing massively. Human curiosity is boundless. And you're seeing the ability to ask these questions that are much more complex, much more detailed, um, that you typically wouldn't ask of a Google or previously weren't really able to ask of a Google that perplexity does just a delightful job of. So while a portion of it, I think, is a little bit of the Google market, I think we're seeing a totally new market emerge. I'd also say that if you look at the adoption of ChatGPT, which is quite large, I, I don't know the exact stats on how many hundreds of millions of people have used it now, but it's enough that you probably should have seen a small dent in Google traffic if it was really like attacking the Google search engine. I don't think we've seen that, uh, which to me just suggests that these markets are massive and there are these concentric circles and bits of overlapping pieces, but the pie is just freaking huge. Yeah, I, I think we we so often frame these moments competitively because we're competitive humans and we think about share gains and battles and rarely is that the case in, in application-based software and B2B software, the vertical um, players that we're seeing so far leveraging AI are typically not competing. They are doing a net new thing. And I feel like what you're saying is that's the same thing that we're seeing in consumer. Um, Maha, you and I have talked a lot about consumer use cases and there's the the picture of let's go after all the consumer companies that exist today. But then we've started getting excited, dreaming about other capabilities. Like how do you think about kind of net new use cases that you fantasize about? If you could wave your magic AI wand and and have a new superpower, what would it be? Oh, that's such a that's such a good question. I mean, honestly, like it would be so many things and we we've talked about this, Kent, but like, you know, I would just try to expand all of my senses in, in ways that I haven't been able to before. So I would, you know, journal every day, I would read all the great books, I would write personalized notes to all of my family and make sure that they were sent automatically on their birthdays. Um, you know, I would um I don't know, I would like make sure that I could augment my memories in ways that I haven't been able to do before, both, you know, record my parents' lives and someday my children's lives and my own life. Um, there's just, there's so much, uh, there's so much dreaming that, you know, we can do. But the really exciting thing about this moment is that all of those things can be a reality and, and we're already yeah. seeing applications being born around uh, some of those use cases. Yeah. Yeah, the moment my my family begins to get birthday messages from me, or the, is the moment they know the singularity has arrived? Because uh, I'm not I'm not always the most considerate birthday person. I'm considerate in other moments. Um, uh, talk about what these 
uh, companies, these consumer companies may look like. Are they going to look like standard web apps? Are they going to look like voice interface? Are they going to look like something else? Is, are we talking about things we experience on our phone and the web? Like, open my mind on, on that dimension. Maha, if you have an opinion, or Talia, sorry. To start, I think the first wave of companies that we've seen in this consumer landscape have been largely more text-based. And I think that's just because we started with these text-based LLMs as the easiest, this kind of chat interface. We're seeing a little bit on voice. I think it's going to evolve quite a bit. And I think that for one like very simple reason, which is people like the visual world more. Like we spend our time scrolling internet, uh, Instagram and TikTok, not you know, scrolling through reams of, and reams of text and humans are lazy and like things to be interactive. And guess what? The technology is becoming much more multimodal. Um, the capabilities are there. I think we're going to have the ability to have these multimodal inputs where you have, you know, voice input, image output, vice versa. And it's just like super rich. And so while the initial applications that you've seen, and remember, we're only like a year or two in, are very text and chatbot based. I think that is very much not what the world is going to look like in even one year, let alone two years. And do you, so do you want uh, an application to be talking to you or or showing you text or showing you an image? It depends. Like, I want, I want it to determine like how I want it to interact with me, right? Like I, I, I'm not, I'm not just a, a one trick pony. <laughs> and I think it'll right, also like just vary by consumer need and what you're using it for. The other thing I'll say other than multimodal is just even from a form factor perspective, we're seeing a ton of interesting activity already. Um, you know, right now the initial wave was more web applications and then phone applications, but we may see the use of LLMs and other form factors like wearables and toys and like handheld devices and so on. Um, and I'm glasses. excited about the glasses are back. We're going to get, we're going to be are, again. Glasses are glasses. officially back. They're officially back. Um, yeah. So I'm excited to see where that goes and what the LLM wave brings for some of those form factors. Maha, you, do you bet that in five years, a significant, you know, non-zero share of the population is going to be wearing some augmented pair of glasses or do you think? Honestly, nah. I don't even wear sunglasses. Like I'm always being told to wear sunglasses. I don't even wear sunglasses. So I'm biased in my response to that, but I could see it like, you know, with platform shifts, you can just never, you can never know. Yeah, I'm my kids at the dinner table will not be wearing these glasses. I yeah. promise you that. <laughs> I'm a skeptic on the glasses. You know, the form factor that no one's really innovated on, but I like think has something there. And so if you're innovating here, let me know is, I think AirPods are such a natural, place for us to start to see more of these actions happening is very discreet. I already wear them. It's easy. It's not intrusive. You could be like delivering me a little bit of information right now while I'm talking to you that's yeah. enhances this entire experience and is just in my ear and ambient. It could be social, but it could also just be personalized. I noticed by the way, you're wearing your hair over one of your ears right now. Maybe. So like, we don't really know what's going on over there. Um, yeah. And it's not as if the barista at the coffee shop is going to be any more annoyed with me if I have AI in my ear versus whatever dumb podcast I'm listening to. So, yeah, I, I do. I think the voice factor is really interesting. And the barista will be able to say, like, you know, there could be a little camera like, oh, that's Kent. Remember? Welcome, Kent. Because if you say, hi, Kent, by his name, he's going to tip you an extra dollar. That's That would work on me. That, yes. that easy. Um, oh, great. Um, anything else on your horizon as you think about consumer AI that we didn't talk about that you think is interesting? A year from now, we're going to be talking about what else are, are we missing right now? I think the thing that has been clear to me is that one of the absolute killer use cases for AI has been just human interaction and that there's a billion lonely people in the world you could call it lonely there's also just a billion people that are looking for entertainment and we spend a lot of our time scrolling social media applications and now you have one that can be more personalized and interactive right. and this behavior whether it's on companies like character or poe or otherwise is so pervasive and is getting so much adoption and i think it's underappreciated just the clear product market fit that exists. Because um, it's a little icky. It's a little sort of taboo relative to like what we think of as historical norms to be having an actual emotional relationship with a computer. We all would go, well, that's crazy. And yet the numbers don't lie, right? Exactly. And look, to be fair, I don't know if it's all that different from feeling 
an attachment to an influencer that you follow on Instagram and have never met and have no interaction with. Um, or Kim Kardashian, who's, you know, essentially a Disney character at this point. Um, the influencers I follow, if they met me in real life, though, we would be friends. I'm pretty convinced of that. So I, that feels more authentic to me. Uh, but I, I take your point. Um, yeah, Maha, anything on your radar that you think a year from now we could be saying, yeah, that's starting to happen? Honestly, I just think that there is just a ton of white space. Like we're seeing a lot of early activity to a lot of these sort of use cases, like the one that Talia just mentioned, but there's so many other things that I'm just like, oh, I wish that was there. And I haven't seen an application that has real product depth or customer attention. So I would just say it's just an incredibly exciting time to build and invest in consumer AI. And my mind is totally open to the possibilities in 12 months. Yeah, I think we're all getting there. Well, awesome. Well, thank you all for spending time and uh, we'll see you next year where we'll find out what really happened and we're probably right about some fraction of it, but we're massively underestimating some other thing as um, we're in a pretty exponential curve here. So, great. One one more question for everyone. Yeah. What are both of your top three most used AI apps? Great question. Top three, I'll be honest. I, I mean, perplexity and, you know, sometimes open AI are, are hogging most of my share and that's about it right now i'm not getting i mean occasionally i'm in image generation when we're d doing some content but you know i have three small kids so I, I don't have a ton of free time to to tap into some of the entertainment um value that i'm that i'm seeing in a lot of these companies so i'm pretty basic i'm waiting for much more functional you know value to come from as you've heard travel booking and other things but there's nothing there for me yet for your kids, I just I got for my nieces and nephews one of these curios, which is an AI toy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. almost like a Furby, but not as creepy and weird. And you can personalize it, and and it will engage with your kids, which actually feels super cool and like a really awesome use case. Kids, hey, have if it keeps them occupied at five in the morning, then yeah. I am very interested. Yeah, so, it goes out in the meantime. It's awesome. Learning, it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, I'm with you. One of the fun things I've started doing is I've been using either Suno or UDO mm -hmm. on people's birthdays, and I just create them a happy birthday song. It's kind of gimmicky, but people love it. And That's honestly, awesome. I love those products so much. They're sort of still make my heart sing. Yeah. Super cool. For me, the top three are probably ChatGPT, Foro, Perplexity, and... Um, I've been playing around with both Mid Journey and this um, application called Viggle for like making funny images or making funny videos of people that I know. And it's all kind of just like fun for now, but um, I really enjoyed it. I playing. remember you made a humiliating video of me. I did I... make a video of Kent. Yes. Yes. I did not offer that. That was um, really um, fun and traumatizing for you, probably. Yes. 